Good morning, everyone. Glad you're joining with us today for another Sunday morning sermon. And uh, I want to uh, go ahead and say it again, like I've been saying for the past several Sundays. I miss church. I miss the assembling together of ourselves. But I've said this also, this will not last forever. In fact, I'm hoping we are in the home stretch and uh, we'll be back together very soon. Uh, I also want to invite you to join us on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock here on Facebook. Uh, David Tate and I are having just a wonderful time taking your prayer requests, praise reports, and uh, just generally trying to lighten everybody's load for an hour or so on Wednesday evening. So uh, tune in then, uh, and we'll have a good time with that. Uh, and in the meantime, please don't don't hesitate to... Uh, on the on the this broadcast you're watching, uh, you know, if you have a prayer request or something like that, please please post it uh, because we do look at these uh, at the conclusion of the program and, and we pray and uh, so please uh, don't 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 be afraid to do that. Um, again, uh, I want to remind everyone because I've been asked uh, so many times about tithes and offerings. If you would like to send in your tithe and offering, uh, there is an address on your screen, uh, P.O. Box 29, Edneyville, North Carolina, 28727. Please uh, send those in, and we appreciate your faithfulness and your generosity to your church. Uh, also want to mention this Tuesday uh, is the Praying on the Mountain event. This was the, the, the brainchild, uh, I guess I could say that, the brainchild of uh, a, a retired pastor. He's 95 years old, served in World War II, fought in the Battle of the Bulge, all of that. He goes to a certain place near his property up on a mountain every day, rain, snow, sleet, shine, it doesn't matter. He's there every day, and he prays. Well, a few months ago, uh, he he just felt like God was calling him to pray for a spiritual awakening for America, for our country. And, beloved, we, we need it. Amen. And uh, so he he was trying to uh, uh, decide what God wanted him to do. And, and he decided, well, we need to get like 20 preachers together and just, just pray for spiritual awakening. Well, before they knew it, there was 200 preachers signed up to do this. Then, all of a sudden... Uh, coronavirus hit, we couldn't assemble, and all of that. So uh, he went back to God, he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and uh, he he said, well, let's see if we can get uh, a couple hundred people just in ver wherever they're at, just to pray on Tuesday, May 5th, for a spiritual awakening in the United States of America. Well, right now, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians going to pray on Tuesday, May 5th. Uh, we were writing down names, people who were committed to pray uh, last Wednesday night during that program. And we got almost 100 people just out of our church. If you are interested in doing that, please uh, give me your name uh, in, in the comments and say, hey, I, I want to pray that Tuesday. And I'm going to add you to the list, and we're going to you register, okay? Or I'll do it for us. We're going to register our numbers, and 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 we're going to just have a mighty movement of God, and and our country is ripe, folks. We need this. Uh, so somebody has asked me again this week, what do you think this coronavirus means? What's God doing in the midst of it? Folks, he's doing a lot of stuff, but one of the things he's trying to do is get the church's attention, okay? He's trying to get America's attention, and uh, unfortunately, most Americans, they won't listen to God, okay? But the church is listening. I'm listening. You're listening, okay? So let's gather up on Tuesday, wherever you're at, okay? And we're going to take a few minutes, and we are going to pray for God's mighty hand to be on our nation, okay? So please, if you're interested in that, uh, please please sign up uh down, down below. Uh, also, I have a very special, okay, a very special unspoken request this morning. Uh, so, someone very near and dear to me is very sick. They're in the hospital this morning, okay, and uh, ser seriously ill. And I want to take just a minute 
if you don't mind, before we get into the sermon, I want to pray for them, okay? Would you join me in praying for this young lady, please? Lord, Father, we come to you right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, I'm praying for this young lady, this, this mom, this wife, Lord, Father. I pray, Lord God, right now that you would help her, Lord, Father. Lord, this is scary, what she's experiencing, what she's going through. But, Lord, Father, I know that this did not take you by surprise. And, Lord, Father, I know that you can heal her. I pray for the doctors and nurses, all the people that will be helping her. But, Lord, Father, I call upon you, the great physician, to touch my sister, Lord, Father. Please help her. Bless her family. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would continue throughout today to pray for that unspoken request, that young lady, I sure would appreciate that. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into our sermon uh, today. And again, thank you for tuning in. I, I, I know you could be doing a lot of things today, but you you've chose to turn on the computer or the cell phone and, and uh, watch me for a few minutes. And I'm, I'm excited about today's sermon. Uh, last week, we were talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, got pretty serious. This week, we're going to lighten up just a little bit, okay? And uh, just just have a little, little fun this morning. Enjoy the Lord, okay? So let's pray for today's sermon. Lord Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to gather together in this manner, Lord Father. Lord, we thank you for the technology. Lord, the people behind the scenes that make this happen, we thank you for them and ask your blessings upon them, Lord Father. But Lord Father, we do pray that pretty soon we'll be able to gather back together physically in your house, Lord Father. In the meantime, continue to bless us and help us, Lord Father. Keep us safe. Bless the word today, Lord Father. Bless this sermon, Lord. Let it touch someone's heart. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. If you will, go to the book of Acts with me this morning. Back to the book of Acts, chapter 2. I want you to go to verse 37. We're going to read in just a minute from 37 to 41. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. And we'll be looking uh, down through verse 41. For the past two weeks, we've been talking about the events immediately following Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, for 40 days, as we, we talked about, uh, 40 days after he was raised from the dead, Jesus walked and talked. He was out there. He's alive. He talked with thousands of people, proving that he's alive. And on that 40th day, after his resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven, not to retire, not to say, well, I'm through, I'm finished. No, but to sit at the right hand of God and make intercession with the Father for you and me. Then now, several days later, this is where we were last week, on the day of Pentecost, the 50th day after the Passover, the Holy Spirit came down and filled the disciples, giving them boldness, power, and spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit. And folks, we're not through with the Holy Spirit. And in a few weeks, we're going to come back. We're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit. God just won't let me let go of that. But on the same day that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter, who was filled with the Spirit, stood and began to preach to thousands of the people who had gathered. And listen. His sermon was simple. He didn't have a lot of illustrations. He didn't have any funny jokes, funny stories. He preached simply, Jesus was crucified, raised from the dead, fulfilling the prophecy that he is the Messiah, the Savior. He preached that we must repent from our sins and put our faith in Jesus in order to have eternal life. Let's begin reading right there. Peter has concluded his sermon. And this is what it says. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now when they, that's all the thousands of people, heard this, they were pricked in their heart. They were cut to the heart. Okay? That's the goal of every preacher is to touch the heart of the people. Peter did that day through the Holy Spirit. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do to receive Christ? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, I told you last week, you don't have to wait to receive the Holy Ghost. It comes when you accept Jesus Christ. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward, that means crooked, generation. Then they they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Everybody say amen at your house today because just like that, the Christian church was born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, how glorious that must have been. Peter just, just stood up. A, 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 a fisherman, no, no great education. He didn't have degrees hanging on the wall. He was just filled with the Holy Spirit, preached to Jesus, him crucified, him resurrected, And 3,000 people came to accept Christ that day, and the church was born. Church. Let me say something today. I love church. I need church. Anyone listening out there today feel the same way? I, I, I love, we say it this way in Eddieville, I love me some church. I do. I love church. I love being together. I love praising. I love seeing the people. I love meeting with God in his house. Well, let's talk about the church just a little bit today, okay? Let's start with numbers. If you're a born-again Christian, right where you're at, okay, don't don't be ashamed or anything like that. Maybe you're you're in a group of people or something and or with family and you don't, you know, don't say amen or nothing like that. But if you're a born-again Christian this morning, just say amen right where you're at. Amen. Okay, now, if you just said amen, you need to know something. You belong to the largest organization in the world. You do. The largest organization in the world. Uh, I did a little research this past week, and here's what I found. I was looking for big organizations. McDonald's employs 1.7 million people. That's a lot of people. Walmart employs 2.1 million people. 2.1 million people. Four of them are cashiers. But 2.1 million people. The United States Department of Defense, listen to this, employs 3.2 million people. Those are big organizations. But listen to this. There are approximately 2.2 billion, billion with a B, Christians around the world. Isn't that incredible? 2.2 billion of us. Trust in Jesus Christ. Folks, what would happen if all 2.2 billion of us walked in one accord? What would happen? I don't think the world we live in would be the same if we all walked together. It would be awesome, wouldn't it? Well, unfortunately, we don't walk in one accord. In fact, it's very difficult for individual churches to walk in agreement. But folks, that doesn't stop me from believing that church is still awesome. Church is still, yeah, churches have problems. Individual churches have problems. The church universal has problems. I, I've had people tell me all the time, well, well, I'm not going to church because this is happening and that's happening. I get it. Churches have problems. There is no such thing as a perfect church. I've heard this one a lot. Well, you know, I'm not going to church because it's it's full of hypocrites. I understand it is. It's full of hypocrites. But that kind of reasoning is uh, let let me let me put this biblically. That's stupid. Okay, that that's that that'd be like saying I'm not going to the gym because it's full of fat people. All right, come come on now. Listen, the church has its problems, and it's not Jesus. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not our Father in heaven that's the problem. It's us. It's the people. 
So listen, if you've been hurt by church and, and you're saying, well, well, well I, I'm not going down there and, and be part of that because this person done that and this. But listen, stop focusing on the people and start focusing on Jesus Christ. That's what the church is about. It's about Jesus Christ, okay? Amen? But listen, I still believe the church is awesome. Even with its flaws and failures, it's awesome. And I want to give you four reasons today why I think church is awesome. Number one, folks, church is awesome because it wasn't man's idea. Church was not man's idea. A bunch of preachers didn't get together that day on Pentecost and where one guy stood up and says, Hey, I got an idea, y'all. Well, I know, I know how to do this. I know how to get people to get dressed up one day a week. We can pass a plate and collect their money, and they can bring a potato salad or something every time we get together, and we'll call it, oh, I don't know, church. No, that's not the way it happened. Now, I realize I'm being a little silly this morning. But that's not the way it happened. Listen, church was established by God, ordained by God. And listen to this one, folks. It's owned by God. This church, your church, is his church. Amen? It does not belong to the preachers. It does not belong to the deacons. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. When preachers and deacons and people decide that the church belongs to them and they're going to run it, okay, that church is destined to fail. They're taking ownership away from God. Okay? This church, Mount Moriah Baptist Church, it belongs to Jesus Christ. Listen, he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There's people out in our world, they, they would love to see the church's demise. They would love to see the church just go away. They don't want to be bothered with you or your God or your church or anything like that. Listen, they won't get rid of it till the rapture, and then they'll wish they hadn't. Okay? Listen, if the church was started by man, it wouldn't have lasted 2,000 years. Amen? Number two, another reason I think church is awesome is because church is good for you. Church is good for you. Have you ever said or thought something like this? Man, my week just seems to go better when I'm in church on Sunday. You ever done that? I, I, I have back, back before I was a pastor, back before I was in church regularly. Folks, I wasn't born a preacher and and but every now and again I'd I'd go to church as a young man and it just seemed like life was a little bit better. Okay? It's not a coincidence. That's not just a happenstance. Listen, it's because there is a power in church in congregating together with God's people that you can't get anywhere else. You can't. Now, now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you can't experience God at work or Walmart or wherever you're, you're at. But Jesus did say in Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Here's where I'm headed. Normally, when we're at work or we're at Walmart or we're at the golf course or at the mall or wherever, we're normally not gathered in his name, are we? No. It's not that we're doing anything wrong, but we're normally not there gathered in Jesus' name. But when you come to church, if you belong to a faith-believing, Bible-believing, Jesus-following church, then you are there gathered together in his name. And he's there. And he's going to give you his holy power throughout that week. It just, it just happens, okay? Now listen, being on church on Sunday gives you Holy Spirit power for Monday through Sunday, okay? Listen, who needs God's power Monday through Saturday? Who does? I do. I need it. I've got to be here on Sunday because it's going to be a tough week if I'm not. Okay, I need that infusion of his power. And, and listen to this. Let me get real radical here, okay? Th this is some wild stuff, okay? Let's say you're going through your week and it's a hard week. Anybody been there? Yeah, it gets hard, okay? Did you know that a lot of churches 
have services on Wednesday evening. Yeah, they do. They do. And guess what? There's two or three of us gathered together then. Maybe you need a little shot of the Holy Spirit in the middle of your week. Amen? Now, again, I know I'm, I'm being a little preachy and a little silly this morning. But listen, it's true. Church is good for you. It's good for me. It's good for us. We need to, listen, I think I said this last week. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You don't. But you need to go to church to be the Christian that you need to be. Amen? Jesus designed the church for us. Okay? It wasn't man's idea. It's Jesus's. Oh, oh, and listen to this, okay? Before I leave this point, and you can check this out. You can Google it if you want to. People who attend church on a regular basis live longer than those who don't on average. Isn't that incredible? God takes care of his people. Number three, church is awesome because church helps you be in the world, not of the world. Isn't that what the Bible tells us to be? The Bible tells us to be in the world, but not of the world. Friends, we live in a world that has no boundaries, no morals, no shame. It just doesn't. Anything goes. Everything is okay. If it feels good, do it. If it makes you happy, if it pleases you, then go for it. That's the world we live in, okay? Just live however you want to as long as it makes you happy, okay? Beloved, that's a dangerous road. That's a dangerous road because that puts us of the world. Yes, we're Christians and we're humans. We have to be in the world, but we don't have to think like the world. We don't have to live like the world. We don't have to be of the world. I, I, uh, I, I watch television and I'm on the Internet and, and all these things, and I, I see what's happening in our world. And... Uh, it's, it's disturbing. It, it, it's, it's quite scary. Too many people, and folks, especially our young people, uh, they, they, they've fallen out of church. They, they, they've, they've, they've bought what the world is selling. And uh, they're, 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 they've left God. They, they, they've left the church. And... Uh, Church is viewed as our society now as something that's unwanted, unneeded, and, and unnecessary. Oh, you don't need to go to church. You, 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 don't, you don't need all of that. The world has everything that you need. Folks, that's a lie from Satan. We need church. We need Jesus Christ. Weekly, daily, we need Jesus our society is in, in love with the world and the things of the world, drugs, alcohol, uh, materialism, secularism, worldly lifestyles, all of that stuff. Listen, church is where you and I can find out what God wants, where there's Sunday school teachers and pastors opening the Word of God and sharing what God wants, what makes Him happy. Okay? And folks, isn't that who we really need to please? God didn't put us here to please ourselves. Yes, He wants us to be happy and He's going to fill us with joy, but we live to please God. And church is where we find out how to do that when we study the Word together. Amen? Number four, and I'll finish up this morning. Church is awesome because church is family. Church is family. Let me ask you a question and be honest. Is God your father? Is God your father? He is if you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, become your Lord and Savior. Okay? If you've done that, God is your father. Well, guess what? He's my father too. If he's your father and God's my father, doesn't that make us all brothers and sisters? We're family. That's one of the wonderful things about church is we're family. Listen, God knew life would be hard at times. Yeah, it, life most of the time is wonderful and great and we have fun, but sometimes life gets real and it gets hard and it gets frightening. And God knew 
that these things would come. Okay? And he knew that we would need help. I need help sometimes. You need help sometimes. Thank God he established the church so that we can rely on one another. Let me just tell you right now. I don't know what I'd do without my church. I don't. I look at people going through issues and problems in their lives and they don't care about God. They don't care about anything spiritual. They don't care about the church. And I wonder, what do they do? Who do they lean on? What do they lean on? Where do they get their help? Well, if you go to church, your help comes from the Lord. He uses me. He uses you to help one another. People have told me over the years, you know, Brian, I, I, if I want church, I can just watch it on television. And, and that, that's good. We're, we're all having to do that right now. A lot of us are watching things on television or Internet and all of that, okay? But some people have been doing that, and they will continue to do that after this virus is gone. And, uh, you know, that, that's cool. Yeah, you, you, can, you can watch a preacher on TV, and there's some good ones on there, much better than me. Some real good preachers. But listen to this. Listen to this. When your marriage is falling apart, when your child is in trouble, when the doctor gives you a bad report, it's good to have that preacher and congregation on TV, but they can't do a whole lot for you, can they? No. You need a pastor who is real, who knows your name, who cares for you and for your family, who shepherds you, who disciples you. You need people who are there for you, who love you, who will care for you. That's church. And you can only receive that at church. Listen, that, that person that I asked us to pray for at the beginning of the, of the service. Awesome young lady. Very sick today. Um, her family called me and asked me, said, hey, would you please have the people pray? And we did. And you prayed. And I pray. And we're going to continue to pray for this young lady. Okay, what if that family had no one to reach out to? What if they didn't have a pastor? They didn't have a church. Who do they turn to? Who do they turn to? Folks, let me tell you something. If you're part of Mount Moriah Baptist Church, you've got a great church. You are blessed. If you're not involved in a local Bible-believing church, please go out Find you a church where Christ is being preached, where people love one another, and it will change your life. God created church because we need it. We need church. Amen. Now, we're going to continue next week talking about church, the early church, what, what it did, what we're to do, and I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, like I said, Pray for your church. Maybe you go to a church and you're, you're having some problems. Listen, we all do. Pray for your church. Don't abandon it. Pray for it. If you go to a great church, praise God for it. Give to it. Invest in the church. And again, and I'll close, if you don't have a local church, please find you a church. Get involved. It'll change your life. Amen. I love church, and I think you will too when you get into it. All right, that finishes up for this morning. I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. I want to say a word of prayer with you before we leave. Lord Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for allowing me this medium to preach the holy gospel, Lord Father. I pray that someone received you as their Lord and Savior today, Lord Father. I pray that you used your word to lift someone up to help them with what they're going through. Lord Father, you are our Father. You love us, and Lord, you're going to take care of us. We love you, Father. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Now, Lord Father, please fill us with your Spirit as we go throughout this week, Lord Father. And Lord, 
Let us meet back together on Wednesday evening and just praise you some more. We love you, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please, if you want to join in uh, Praying on the Mountain, leave your name in the comments below. If you have a prayer request, leave those too, okay? We just love you and appreciate you, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.